For the past week or so, I've been looking into a lot of the details of the Supernote A5X2 that's bound to be released pretty soon. And I've kind of broken the things I want to talk about into two topics. And one is sizing, then accessories, then the screen of the device and some general stuff. I put out a video last week about the announcement of the actual device, so you can check that out if you want to see it. First, getting into the actual sizing, I uh, looked at the website here, and you can see they put it next to the Nomad. For the Nomad, I have the actual dimensions here, so I kind of scaled it to the picture of the A5X2 they have, and I did a few calculations to find out that the device should roughly be about 253 millimeters by 184 millimeters. Now, this is obviously subject to a little bit of variation because I'm measuring from a very small point here, but uh, I did uh, put a little sizing chart here together so you can kind of get a perspective of how big it is compared to the Nomad right there. And this is a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for reference. And so this is kind of what we're looking at in terms of the device. I will throw up a remarkable two here for reference. So looks like it'll be about the same width as the remarkable two, a little bit taller, but uh, we'll have a much bigger screen. This is 10.3 that I'll have a 10 point seven inch screen as you can see here. What allowed me to kind of get the screen on here is that I have this VWoods AI paper. So I was able to measure the dimensions of this and kind of overlay it here. The only thing I don't really have a measurement here is the, I know the top is smaller than the kind of bottom bezel here, but I'm not exactly sure by how much. So this is a rough approximation of what should be here with this screen size in terms of these dimensions. This is the only thing that I wasn't able to be super accurate with, but kind of eyeballed it and looked at the device here to guess the distance there. And uh, just for reference too, the VWoods AI paper is, uh, should be smaller in every dimension, smaller bezels and um, smaller top bezel as well. The bottom one is rather large here. So hopefully that gives you a little bit in terms of the sizing aspects here. Now in reference to the design of the A5X2 and potential accessories, I think that one interesting thing here is some people were bummed that it might not be perfectly symmetrical, but I do think there's cause for this and that almost makes me lead more into thinking that there will be a type folio because if you look at the type folio here on the Remarkable, for example, the Remarkable 2, the keys are almost perfectly centered with the screen and this bezel allows for the arrows here and some more of the modifiers as well. And so it kind of does center the screen and it's the same as the Remarkable Paper Pro as well if you look at that design. We can see that the pogo pins are on the left side where the actual folio attaches which to me seems like they moved that from the Nomad, the top here. This I never really was a strong believer that it was gonna get a type folio style thing, but the 10.6 or 6.5, 7 inch screen size and A5 size in general seems perfect for a type folio. So I could definitely see something like that coming here because of the placement as well. It's more akin to the remarkable placement where they have the pogo pins down here and then that just leads into a better interface to a keyboard. So speculation, but I think that's likely to happen. Then the other thing would be like a full folio, you know, something like this, where the device could attach in here, like clip in, but then have a back as well. That's certainly a possibility. I think they wanted to really promote this half folio style. So I could certainly see a full folio style thing coming out that would be a little more protective for the back of the device, but it wouldn't need a pen loop because that's obviously integrated into the device as you can see here now. And then another thing is just like the Nomad, you can see here on the original A5X that the USB-C port is on the bottom, which tends to not be as nice of an experience when you're using the device on a table. So like the USB port on top kind of keeps everything out of your way and gives you a clean working space. 
Whereas the bottom, uh, it's always kind of dangling off the table at that point and could be a little annoying sometimes. I made kind of a speculatory accessories video that we could see for the Nomad or the A5X2, but I think having some form of a light that plugs into the USB on top would be actually possible either by them or by some third party. I don't believe Supernote themselves are working on light accessories. Uh, I think I saw something on a Reddit post a long time ago, but that could be something that someone else could make, like a, a case that has an integrated light in it. And having the USB port on top would be more apt for that. Now, one interesting thing I think about the screen, let me give these both refreshes, is that the actual gray or like white color on the Carta 1300 is lighter. There's almost a little bit more of a gray, like yellow tint to this, whereas this gives that better contrast and has, let's see, let me go to a fine liner. Part of the contrast on these screens is A, due to getting more black pixels, but also the relative contrast of the base screen color. And so that is something that I noticed in this photo here, right here, or this video, that it, if you notice on the Nomad here, it is very white, like a, a pure white almost. And the screen contrast is very noticeable. You can see on the VWoods AI paper, they've kind of matched it just like the Remarkable 2 here. And that's kind of a, a trick that Remarkable started and has progressed in the industry now. But based on this photo, like you can see the device itself appears to be almost a cream color here. We won't really know until we, we see the device in, in real life. But from this photo, that is certainly not the same white unless their videography isn't uh, doing it justice here. But it looks like it's more akin to the actual color of the screen. And then you can see on the border, there is the white. So it is significantly more white on the outside than on the screen, which is a kind of design trick. And I, I feel like Supernote's kind of been known for the white appearance. So it's interesting to see that they're straying from that, but it does provide a kind of cleaner overall look to the front, in my opinion. But then on this screen, you can see it's not as gray as it looks there, but it is definitely more gray than white, like the outside little border here. The Carta 1300 here looks maybe a shade or two less gray than the Carta 1000 here on the Super Nomad. I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but from my eyes, that's what I can kind of tell. So the Mobius screen that is plastic should feel relatively similar to this VWoods AI paper here, but it will have a Feel Right 2 protector on it kind of like the Nomad. And in my opinion, that should actually make it feel a little bit softer overall than the Nomad, because the Nomad, I believe, is a glass screen. But on the VWoods AI paper here, the screen does have a little more give to it, like a little kind of bend. And so I think the Feel Right 2 on the Mobius screen should maybe feel a little bit different than it does on the Nomad. You'll notice that they removed the drop test. Uh, I had that in my last video. You can check that out if you want, it's still there, but they removed that from the site. And it's probably, I still think it's like a very durable device. I just think when they do like a drop test like that, they maybe open themselves up to some kind of stuff with users where if they throw it and it breaks or something, then they're like maybe liable. So I get why they, they removed that. They still have the Frisbee, Frisbee disc toss video, which is, is good to see. But anyways, the point of this was that the 2x cost of glass. So I think they're really just putting that there because people associate plastic with being cheaper than glass, like glass is more premium. But, and you know, there's a little bit of flex on this V Woods paper. But yeah, it's got a softer touch to it than, than the, the glass screens like the Nomad. But you have to remember this is gonna be covered with Feel Right 2. So that'll probably change the kind of feel of it as well. But I think they really say that just to promote the fact that it is A, more durable, but B, is not cheaper because it's plastic. And I can't imagine, it, when they say 2x the cost of glass, I really wonder if that's, that can't be the whole screen panel, that just has to be the substrate on top 
that is the glass or the plastic layer. So I don't think it's going to be that much more expensive because they're saying it's 2x cost of glass. That should be like no more than single digit percentage in terms of the overall price. And then another important thing I think here is that they've now with the half folio and the kind of like pen loop and all that, they've pretty much removed all magnets from this device. And if you've kind of followed the Remarkable 2 um, or some other devices that have, you know, edges that have magnets on them for either the folio or the pen, you do sometimes not get, you see there how it's missing the edges? I'll do it with the Remarkable pen. But you see how I can't get that edge support? That is specifically due to those magnets. The edge support isn't the best. And that is something that with the mechanical folio, kind of going back to the original A5 roots, that is something that they've probably eliminated completely because of the lack of magnetism, which can interfere with these Wacom styluses. In terms of the screen, I think that Atelier was really just kind of a like teaser for how good the Atelier app can be. And it'll be really exciting to have this on a much bigger screen. This VWoods is very good for drawing as well. Just, you know, it feels different, the pen's different. But um, I did a video on this last week if you wanna check out drawing on this device. But Atelier is a little more apt for drawing. And so having an A5 size device is gonna be really cool. And I think the Nomad was a little bit of a teaser because it is a 7.8 inch screen for like what Atelier really can be. And the A4 will be even more so as a large digital campus basically for sketching. The, the thumbnail for this video was actually a hidden image on their site I believe that someone found in the HTML code. And that is kind of this. So you can get a fresh look here and see like the pogo pins are on the side. Um, it does look way more white in this image, but this looks like a digital render, so don't want to trust that until we actually see a device out in the wild or their promo content. One thing I think will be interesting to see will be the pen to paper distance on the A5X2. The only other panel that we really have in the West market right now is this VWoods AI paper that has Cardi 1300, and it has really good pen to paper distance. At, if you look here, it's about 750 uh, micrometers. And I think the Remarkable was like 920. The Paper Pro, the old Remarkable was even higher, like 940 something. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of relates in the SuperNote world because they do have Feel Right 2, which creates a layer on top and adds a tiny bit more distance, but for the added feel. So that'll be something interesting to, to see when it, when it comes out. Also in this post, they, someone noticed that when they're flipping it around, there were some fitment issues with the back plate. And I think Supernote actually responded to this. Yeah, Chief Chat Officer Supernote, thank you for taking the time to help us find the problem. This is the working sample from PVT1. And that is a known issue they had to deal with. So, you know, it's 0.7 millimeters thinner than the Nomad, which is the first modular tablet we've had. So you, it's understandable that that was kind of an issue they had to deal with. Fortunately, we finally solved this problem. So that should not be an issue. And then here's another one. You can see that little bit of lift there. But it looks like they've taken the time to solve that. And remember, it is, you know, it's 5.9 millimeters thin and fully modular, which is a big feat in and of itself for a tablet that is still remarkably thin and 3.5 millimeters on the side. So the middle of it is the bulk of the, the stuff, like the battery motherboard and all that. One thing that's probably on everyone's mind is what the pricing is gonna be like and also when it's gonna be released. We don't really know either of those, but if we base things off of the A5X price, which I think was 415, we can assume with inflation, increased complexity of the modularity, I would assume it would be somewhere around the VWoods AI paper price that is in the 500 range, give or take, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. I think that's probably a good estimate of where it could land. And then obviously with the folio and pen, it could be more expensive than that. But leave a comment on what your thoughts are of the price or maybe even the release date. Those are kind of some of the things I've been thinking about the 
A5X2 in the past week and some of the things I've seen on, on Reddit, for example. But I uh, would love to know your thoughts down below. And if you want to take a look at the Carta 1300 screen that it'll be using on this VWoods AI paper, I talked a little bit about the screen and the technology in the video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.